Hey everyone, it's Ryan on the Syntax Byte, and in this video what I'm going to show you how to do is import a, 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 an Excel file into an SQL database. Now this will work with a large variety of Excel files, um, of course, you know, Excel file pretty standard format, but it also works with basically any kind of SQL database, so not just Microsoft SQL Server, but also MySQL, SQLite, Oracle. Uh, so basically any type of SQL database you have, uh, PostgreSQL, that should all be able to be used with this method with some small changes to the script. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Python uh, and specifically Python's uh, pandas library. Uh, it's, a, it's a library often used for, for data analysis. We're going to use that as a little bit of a quick middleman between the Excel file and the SQL server. It's really quick script, less than 10 lines of code, and we're going to be able to use that as a middleman to move the data from our Excel file into our SQL Server really, really easily. So to get started, there's a couple of packages that we just want to make sure that we have. So we're going to do pip install. These are going to install the Python packages. We want pandas uh, xlrd. That's a optional pandas dependency that allows it to read Excel files. Uh, and then SQL Alchemy, and that's a uh, SQL library for Python. Let's start by installing those. Perfect, so now that those are installed, one last thing I'll mention is that if you're using this on an Ubuntu computer, I'm actually gonna use the Windows subsystem for Linux, but you could use uh, just a regular Python install on Windows, you could use a Mac, uh, but in this case I like using the Ubuntu with the Windows subsystem for Linux. You may also want to install the Python 3 MySQLDB package, so if you're using uh, MySQL. So just go sudo app install Python 3 uh, MySQLDB. Uh, that's my password, perfect. Uh, so it's already on the newest version, but just make sure you have that installed there if you're using Ubuntu. So with that being done, we can go ahead and dive into the script. Now, I have an SQL file here. It looks like this. Or, pardon me, not an SQL file, an Excel file. It looks like this. It's basically perfectly laid out. We got a top row with columns, and we got all our rows. It's just four, uh, four columns long. It's basically perfectly laid out. There are some uh, modifications you can make to these functions uh, in order if you have an Excel file that is a little bit less perfectly laid out. Uh, but in this case, mine's pretty good, so I won't have to make any changes. But just to let you know, if you had like a blank row here or something, there's options available to, to tell Python, oops, I don't want two blank rows, I want none, uh, to, to start uh, you know, one row down or, or whatever. You could always just fix the Excel file, but maybe this was sent to you by someone who's gonna be sending more in the future and you'd rather just build into a script, that's perfectly possible. Um, so now, we want to start by basically bringing that Excel file into Pandas main data structure, which is called a data frame. And once we get it as a data frame, then we can tell Pandas to insert that into our SQL database. So what we want to start off with here is we're going to do import Pandas as PD. Oops. Adam did that to me earlier today. It's, it's not. It's just not what I want. Uh, no semicolon, of course, because it's Python. I haven't been writing a lot of Python lately, so pardon me. Uh, and then we're gonna call our variable df that just stands for data frame. We're only gonna have one, so it just kind of makes sense. We can do pandas, which we imported as pd dot read excel, and then we just give it the name of the Excel file. And if your Excel file is perfectly laid out, like mine is, then that's all you need. But there are other options you can pass to the function uh, if your Excel file is a little bit less perfect. Uh, so definitely go ahead and read the documentation here. Then we can do a print of pd dot, or sorry, df dot head. That's gonna just print the first few rows so that we can see that it was imported properly. And once we've verified that, we can move ahead with the script with uh, putting it in an SQL database. But let's just run it once like this and see what happens. So I'm gonna do a Python 3, uh, import sql.py. Okay, so I see that all our columns are in there properly. Uh, pandas adds this little index here uh, to the data and then uh, this, this data all looks correct so I don't need any changes there but if 
if things weren't importing properly for you, you might have to mess around with some of the options for the function or, or change your sheet a little bit. Uh, so I can go ahead and remove that that print, um, or I could keep it. Doesn't doesn't really matter too much. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and take that data and throw it into our SQL database. So I'm going to add another import here. We're going to do from SQL Alchemy import create engine. I'll have a space there. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do engine equals create engine. And I'm going to use a MySQL database. So MySQL colon slash slash username colon password. Oh, I just made it the same for my little local host thing here. Local host slash contacts. So I have a DB called contacts and I want to import these contacts from my Excel file into that uh, database. Uh, and so then we can do a df.2 SQL. Uh, we're going to give it a table name. So I'm going to call mine people. And then we're going to give it a connection, which is going to be our engine. And so remember, the syntax might be different here if you're using a different kind of SQL database. But basically, the rest of the code is the same. So it's basically just this, this string here that you're going to have to change depending on your database connection. Of course, you'll have to change it anyway. This is the username. You're not going to have my username. You're not going to have my password. Probably, you might still be using localhost. I'm not sure. And you're probably going to have a different database name. So make sure you change that up. Uh, and I, I'll provide a link down below to my written tutorial, uh, which has more information available um, and, uh, and links to uh, official documentation as well. Uh, so if you are having difficulties with this. So now we just do df2sql, we give it a table name, and we give it the connection. That is all we need. Now, one very important thing that I will note before we run this file, if you are following along live, is that this will overwrite whatever is in that table. So if you already have data in that table, this is going to, this it will probably fail, but it might overwrite it. So absolutely, guys, make sure if you're doing this on a live database, which you probably shouldn't start with it on a live database, have a backup of the data. Um, I'm not responsible for anything that happens to your database following these instructions. So um, have a backup of the data. I'll show you how to append so that it doesn't replace the table in a few moments, but just have a backup of your data regardless. Um, yeah, I don't want you guys to lose data doing this. It, it is a, you know, the, the, these, these commands can, can overwrite data. So just be cautious, it's, it's not gonna create a pop-up, it, it might not fail. Just please have a backup of your data if you have important data. In this case, I'm just messing around on my local host, so I don't have to worry about any of that. So now we can go ahead and run it and we should see the table pop up. So in Heidi SQL here, I have something open. It's, it's my contacts database, we, get, we can refresh it. Um, you can see it has no, no tables to, to show, so we should see that pop up. So. Go ahead and do Python 3, import SQL, and we can go ahead and do a refresh here. We see that the people table pops up. It's got 89 rows, awesome. Uh, so you can see it's automatically determined the columns we need and the types, so that's awesome. Um, and then we can go see the data, it's all here. So that's awesome. Now the next thing I'll show you guys how to do is uh, append. So right now if we run the script again, we can go ahead and just run it again uh, and you'll notice that okay it did fail because it already exists but it would just overwrite this um, or it just fails. So maybe you have multiple files that you need to import or maybe you're trying to import this data from an Excel file to an existing table. So how do we do that? We need to change the if exists to append. So go ahead and add that there. Run it again. And if we refresh, we should have, oh, that's not what I want. Refresh. 178 rows total. So you can see this goes down. Now, one issue you will notice is that our indexes, which carried over from pandas, are repeating. Now for our purposes, the indexes that pandas assign to it is probably not what we want. So what we wanna do is we probably wanna prevent it from inserting its own indexes 
and then we can just insert an index column after on our own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this table just to get things cleaned up here for us. And I'm going to show you, you add the property um, index equals false. And so that will prevent Panda from inserting its own indexes. Those aren't useful. It's creating duplicate indexes for us. Every time we do this script, we want to just let um, the SQL Server manage its own indexes. Don't insert them. So we'll go like that. We'll run it again. So now we should see that, okay. There, so it's got no indexes, so it didn't put an index. So that's good, so we know it's not wrong, but then you also probably wanna have an index on your table. So what you can do is you can go ahead and do an add column. I'm gonna do this graphically. If you're not using HiDSQL, it's gonna be a little bit different. You can also just use a, 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 a pen table query. But I'm gonna add ID. I'm gonna move it to the top. I'm gonna to make this data type. It's gonna be, it's gonna be int. Um, I'm gonna set it as we're gonna cr create a new index. We're gonna call it primary. Uh, I want auto increment. Perfect. So I've got ID. It's, it's primary key. It's auto increment. Then I'm gonna do a save. That's gonna assign IDs to them. Perfect. So this is almost exactly what it looked like before, except. SQL starts at one. Um, so perfect, that's what we want. Now, because we have this index off as false and we have a pen, we can go ahead and run the script again. It will insert those, but they'll all be given new indexes. So if we go ahead and do a quick refresh, we can see where it restarts here with Teresa Fullington. So we're gonna have two of those, Teresa Fullington, she's 43, uh, but it gives this new insert a unique index. So now we don't have that problem anymore where indexes or IDs were repeating themselves, probably don't want that issue. So that's how you go ahead and solve that. Just let the SQL Server take care of it itself, add the column, and tell Pandas not to insert its indexes. That's not helpful in our case. Now one last thing I will mention that I didn't show in this particular video is how to um, actually specify the data types if the data types you want are different from what pandas is selecting. Um, you can actually pass a dictionary here, but I'm not going to show you how to do it right now. Anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Remember you can use this with all types of databases. I hope it's a helpful uh, tool for you guys, maybe even if you're new to Python, but this is a pretty good way to just go ahead and get some data from Excel to SQL with Python as the middleman. And I will see you in the next video. Like, comment, subscribe if it helped you out and have a nice day.